Padre Pio, Pio was born um, Francesco Forgioni in 1887 um, in Italy, Italy in a little town called Pietro Lucina. He became a, a Capuchin priest and lived in the monastery for 50 years. He was noted as a confessor, as a spiritual advisor, as a counselor, very pastoral. He had such an intimate and personal relationship with Christ that he bore in his body the wounds of Christ had on the cross. You'll see him pictured with bandages around his hands um, because they were bleeding constantly. So it's a, amazing <clears throat> who had that relationship with Christ and then he, in his spiritual guidance of many, many people who sought him, um, he really was Christ to them. In celebrating his feast, we thank the Lord for intimate union with Padre Pio and for the witness of his life. I think I read in one place where people reported that they would go to confession to him, and when they were through confessing their sins, he would say, I think you have a few more to tell me. He somehow could read right into the soul. That would be an awesome experience, wouldn't it? But he was a great saint. He spent his life uh, really helping people to become closer to Christ. And so we celebrate his feast today with joy. Pope John Paul II, um, I think he died in 1986 at the age of 81. And Pope John Paul II uh, put his feast in, a, in the general um, celebration of the Mass every year on this date, because he died on September the 23rd. The readings today are very interesting. We're all so familiar with the reading from Ecclesiastes about time. There's a time for everything under the heavens, and it goes on to list all the things we experience. But there's still something in Ecclesiastes which sees all this as kind of a cycle of life, but they're not sure of the meaning of life. We talked about that Sunday or yesterday. And time is, we have phrases like time, time heals everything. Well, time in itself does nothing. Time is a gift from God given to us. And what we do with our time is what's important to God. We often say that we just don't have enough time to do things. I know I say that all the time. And, um, <clears throat> and yet, no, for some people, if they had all the time in the world, it wouldn't be enough time. Because it depends on how we use time is the, is the whole point of the, of the gospel today. Um, Jesus predicts that he's going to suffer and die on the cross and that he will be raised up on the third day. You and I are called by Christ to become a part of that resurrection life. And so in our sufferings and in our joys and all the things we experience each day, we unite them with Christ. And they have meaning for us if we truly unite them with the Lord. All the particular things that we do every day, we make decisions, we sign contracts, we have experiences, we travel, we do all kinds of things. And all those, if they are good things that we do, they're blessed by God. And we give of ourselves and take sacrifice and sometimes suffering. And even in our sufferings, if we join them with the Lord, we're slowly beginning to, to enter into the joy of the resurrection. Time will end for us. One day, we will all be pronounced dead. And time will end for us. But it's only the door to eternity where there is no more time. We can't even begin to imagine being in heaven and realizing that nothing ever changes. My mother always used to say when we were together as a family and enjoying some special occasion, she would be so reluctant to go home and she'd just say, I just don't want this moment to end. And at her funeral, I said, Mom, now you're in heaven. And when you say, I just don't want this moment to end, it never will in the joy of heaven. And I think that's what this readings about time is doing is so Whatever we do today, let's do for the glory, greater honor and glory of God. Offer it to the Lord and let it be what the Lord would want us to do. Let us stand and offer our prayers and petitions.